Imagine you have a five layered cube, but you cannot touch the inner layer. What will happen? Sometimes the inner layer will come out of alignment like this. However, on a 4x4 cube, you will not be able to know that. You will only feel why can't you move it? What you have just watched is a reenactment of XB27, designer of the X Cube 4, which around 2012 or 2013 he was accused of copying someone else's alignment mechanism, which he made a video defending himself to prove that his mechanism was original and in the 80s. I will leave a link to the original video like in the description, as well as the Cube vs Cube video by Crazy Bad Cuba, which included XP27's video inside of it. The X cube alignment mechanism is the most widely used mechanism in modern day and I will explain how it works and then how to build it in on shape. Center pieces in the middle is broken in two parts. One is a circle and the other is a square. The square carries out the normal function of the center pieces, meaning it's there to hold the neighboring pieces in place. And it also has to be able to freely rotate. So it's totally detached and it's a piece on its own and the other piece is the circular piece which has a bump on it the bump is supposed to lock on to a center piece so if the center piece were to turn any way that interferes with the bump it will pull the entire inner layer along with it and this will ensure that the inner layer always follows one side however the bumps must be in very specific positions you don't want bumps on both the left and the right so this bump here is on the right and you absolutely won't want a bump on the left because that means that you the middle layer will lock to this side and it will lock to the other side as well and you will not be able to turn it. The intersection point for example right and down, it means that the bump for this particular center will be right here underneath this piece and as a matter of fact it is. So because of the specific position of where the bumps are supposed to be, this circle is not supposed to move, it's supposed to lock to the core and you can tell I cannot turn this circle at all. Continuing from where the previous build left off, the first thing we want to do is to cut away this bottom part of the centerpiece and we want to cut it by a very specific number. What I want to do is hide other parts. This number actually depends on or like whether you're going to design your own core or fit your cube to an existing core. Usually I like to fit my cubes to an existing core but for the completeness of this video I'm going to design my own core. This is what I'm going with. So in this case, I'm going to start a new sketch. I'm going to click on front, draw a rectangle. And the rectangle must cut through the origin line. The width of the rectangle is not important, but the height needs to be a specific number, which in this case I'm going to choose 13 because it's just big enough to cover up that bottom part that I don't want to see. And then I'm going to click on extrude, click on remove, and it has to be symmetric. And I'm going to select that rectangle that I've just drawn. I'm going to save. Next step is I want to round off the entire stock so that like the next function will work. So in this case the radius of this rounding is 3.5 because the thickness of the stock is 7. Then I'm going to click all four of this. And then this will be a completely round center stock. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this piece and this other piece here and hide other parts. And I'm going to switch on the section view. Okay, so I went normal to the front plane and I'm going to start another sketch on the front plane. And we want a series of four lines which will look something like this. The important thing is you want this vertical line to coincide with the center stock. So I just click on this line, click on the vertical axis here, and I just fix the distance at 3.5, like using the dimension tool. And I'm just going to dimension all the other parts just for like, just because I like round numbers, or I like exact values. Although you can also do it do it by eye. So this one. Then you save the sketch and you exit the section view. Next thing you want to do is to revolve. So we click on the sketch that we just made. And then for the revolve axis is the vertical axis. 
and then we save this command and the next command we are going to do is split so for parts or surfaces to split we select these two make the, both the center pieces and the entity to split with we choose this shape here and then we save this command and now we have a total of four pieces which is not exactly what we want so we have this square which is what we want and this centerpiece with a hole right here which is what we want but the extra part here is this bump and this circular piece are still two separate pieces and we will need to combine them so I can actually just click on these two click on hide other parts and then I have this piece here and I'm going to show you the way that works on, on shape which is click on this function here called boolean and then select union and then click on both these parts here and save the command and they'll fuse together in the past when I was using SOLIDWORKS like there is a function that fuses parts together but I tried doing it on, on the 4x4 alignment mechanism and it didn't work so what I would do instead is I would actually start a sketch and draw a quarter circle that is exactly this size and then okay, I'm not going to do it now but like once I complete that quarter circle I, I will use the extrude function to like fuse it right through the bump and the center piece at the same time and you make it one piece so the next thing we need to do is we need to have a way to lock this center piece click on normal to the top plane Okay now, the, okay, now it's in the bottom left quadrant, but not to worry. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to start a sketch, click on top. And then, just draw a circle like that. Actually, yeah, we need this circle here. The radius is 3.5. And then we will complete this quarter of a circle with two more lines and then we want to extrude click on this thing and we want to remove and th in this case it's going in the wrong direction so click this arrow to flip it and for the height since I cut these three quarters at a height of 13 this one quarter has to be slightly bigger so I'm going to choose 16 And next, I'm just going to build the core. Choose any plane I want. Sketch. And draw a circle. The seven, because that's the thickness that we have chosen already. And then we're going to extrude. Click on this circle. We want it to be symmetric. And early on, since we cut these three quarters by 13, we want the depth to be 26. Because symmetric will extrude on both sides. So it's 13 on both sides. So 26 is the total value of circular pattern. We want to add for merge scope. We click on this piece as well. We add the piece to pattern. Click on part eight and uh, which is the cylinder merge scope. We also want the the same cylinder itself. Axis of pattern. Just click on any axis that is perpendicular to the cylinder, and then we save this circular pattern again. And then add the piece to pattern is this structure here. And the axis of pattern, we want a different axis. And we want to add, we don't want to create a new solid. So again, we just, for merge scope, we choose this same part again. And then we save. Now we need the core to have a mechanism to lock to the centerpiece, which is basically a corresponding shape to enter this hole here. We're going to isolate both the core and the centerpiece. Instead of actually using a sketch, I can actually go to extrude right away and click on the sketch 7 which is the semicircle that I just draw like earlier since I made this cut 16 earlier so the depth I want is 32 I want this to add and for merge scope I need to select this piece here and I also need to click on symmetric so that it will go both ways and now you can see the shape is actually complementary so I can hide this part now test on every face except that I have to manually draw a new semi a new quarter circle every time so I'm going to start a new sketch 
click on in this case it's the the front plane yeah and then I'm going to draw a quarter circle in this case it's, on, it's going to be on the right side since like this column is already on the right so I, I have to make sure it's properly aligned and then I can just copy this circle and of course I can use the dimension tool the radius has to be 3.5 then after that just extrude and click on the quarter circle that you have just drawn then same thing symmetric 32 and like it has to add and the merge scope has to be part 8 or like whatever your software labeled for the center piece I mean the core piece and then after that we'll draw another one it's the same process again this time we have two restrictions because I've chosen up and in this case this one's on the left so I'm going to draw in this case this is right plane and then radius 3.5 Okay, sometimes if the software has ex fixed something for you, like without your permission, all you can all you can do is click on the this thing and delete. And yeah, it once you delete the relationship, it should be in the correct position. Then just complete this circle. And then same thing, extrude, make it 32, make it symmetric. You want it to, re you want it to add, and the merge scope has to be this shape. And there are surfaces to extrude this, the the one that you have just drawn. So now obviously we need holes for the screws to enter the core. In this case, we are going to assume that the screws are going to cuff their own threading into the core. So you want the holes to be the same size as the screw. In this case, I'm going to assume that the screws are 3mm thick. So I'm going to start a new sketch. For sketch plane, I can choose any plane I like. And I just normal to that plane as well. Press N on the keyboard for normal. And then I'm just going to draw a circle and make the diameter 3. This one is dependent on whatever screw you want. You choose the diameter of the screw. And then extrude, we want true all, and we want symmetric, and we want to select that sketch, and we want it to remove. And since this is a same a symmetric pattern that we are going to do everywhere, we can use the circular pattern function. Unlike the bumps, where the bumps have to be intentionally like positioned, so you can't just symmetrically copy them over so for this one I want to do a feature pattern and then feature to pattern click on extrude 8 axis of pattern click on the vertical axis and you need sometimes you need to click apply per instance otherwise that will give you an error message then I'm just going to repeat this process on another axis So select a different axis. So we're going to do the same piece, same process on the center piece. Except that this time we want to make three holes. Or like or three cuts of three different depths. So first one is for the head of the screw. So this one also depends on what screw you're using. I'm just going to throw in an arbitrary number. And then you just extrude, click on remove, click on that sketch, and then choose a depth. In this case, I'm just going to put 2.2 because I don't, I don't want to cut away the lower piece there. Then the second one is for the spring. So this is the same thing, just draw a circle, make it the thickness of the spring, which I'm just going to put 5 because 
just designing it arbitrary queue. But it has to be able to fit an existing set of springs that you have. And I'm going to save this extrude, remove, and then click on this circle. And then, of course, I don't want it to cut all the way, I want it to stop slightly short of this like locking point. So I'm going to make it, let's say, 10. Which is, okay, in this case, it's too close, so I'm going to make it 9. Which, yeah, that is a good distance of the cuts. You can see that it ends right here. And finally, I'm going to make a hole for the body of the screw. In this case, I want it to be a bit bigger than 3. Because it has happened before where I actually made this hole too small and the screw started carving into the centerpiece, which is not what we want. We only want the screw threading to carve its way into the core. So in this case, we make it a little bit bigger than the screw. So for a 3mm screw, let's say I'm going to choose 3.2, maybe a little bit bigger depending on how accurate your 3D printer is. I'm going to save this sketch, and again extrude, click on this circle and remove. Now we have a functioning centerpiece. Enough space to put a screw inside and a spring 